Good afternoon all and thank you for joining us for a se another Secret Sunday session today. Today I'm joined by Shannon all the way from California. Um, thank you for joining us and before we get in into all of the nitty gritty questions and about your journey, who are you and what it is that uh, you're doing with yourself now? I, my name is Shannon, like you said, and I am a mom of three children and married. Um, and right now I've just been really enjoying my time on social media, which I was used to be more opposed to, but I'm really enjoying it now ever since COVID. So I'm spending lots of time there. And then I also have a normal job as well as a realtor. So I'm balancing my two jobs now, but it's been lots of fun and children. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, wow. And you have such a, a great presence on social media. Did that start during COVID? Yes. Mo yeah, it really got a lot bigger during COVID. I had had an account before, but it was mostly just friends and family on it. And it wasn't as big of a deal as it is now. Um, but yeah, it definitely has progressed over the last year and a half and turned into what it is now. Yeah. So if we talk about your presence on social media, it's not your typical um, ideal of what people would post on social media. Um, could you explain to us a little bit what it is that you post for those of us that don't know? Yes, I, um, I do humorous content and I, I kind of got into it with the whole TikTok thing that started in COVID. Um, that whole craze because it's easy and it's accessible and it just makes the editing process and everything so easy. So I do funny videos. Most are marriage or family related parenting, a lot of parenting stuff. Um, and I have always used humor in my life kind of as a little therapy. So I'm like, so my friends are like, can you share this with more people? So I started putting it out there more. And, um, and again, it's turned into what it is now. And it's, it's been a lot of fun. And now I'm like, I have to do it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Does it, I guess, ever get exhausting where you, you do have to constantly post your life and post um, all the bad things or the good things because people want to see it? Yeah. You know, that part of it doesn't get exhausting. I like sharing real life. Um, the exhausting part is having two jobs because I do consider it kind of a job now. I am doing ads for different companies. Um, so you start having more deadlines and I love my, my real job. So that part has been a little bit challenging balancing those two things. But as far as sharing, I love what I share. Um, but yeah, there are days that I miss and I'll have people, you know, messaging me like, why didn't you post today? And I'm like, sorry, real life. <laughs> <laughs> and we take it back to those initial moments when you started during COVID. Why did you start this? Um, I've always done kind of the videos for friends and family, like I said, and COVID at the beginning, especially we were just home so much with our family and I have two little girls, um, that are now eight and nine. And so we would do little, like fun little dance videos. I can't dance at all. So, but I always would do it with them and we do these fun things. And that's when I kind of discovered how easy and fun TikTok was. Um, and then that's just kind of where it got started. And then I'm like, Hey kiddos, I, I don't need you in my videos anymore. So step off. <laughs> and then I just, and then I just kept on going. And then I had one go viral. And once that one took off, I realized like, okay, not everyone has to do that, but most of my videos relate to someone. And so I figure if just one person can get, you know, some comfort or something out of each video, then it's worth it. So yeah. keep on going. <laughs> you said it as well. It's very therapeutic for you being obviously, you know, balancing those two jobs. Um, is that one of the reasons why I guess you keep going as well? Absolutely. And I, um, and it's not just the action of doing the videos and posting the videos that I love. I've been so encouraged over this last year and a half, um, by the interactions with other people out there that I've never met in real life. I've created some amazing, like really amazing relationships with other parents in the communities. And, um, that part of it has been so therapeutic and so exciting to me, like to have real connections, um, and even just the different messages, I, you know, daily will get messages. And of course, there's always the, the troll side of things too, but a majority of it is very positive and I'll get messages. Um, there's one gal that I've been messaging back and forth with whose husband died um, towards the beginning of COVID. And 
She said, you seriously keep me going. I, I get on every day looking for your videos. And it's so humbling to me um, when I get these messages because it's like, wow. Like, and so people sending me messages like that really encourage me and yeah, keep me going because I'm like, okay, I touched one person today. That's, that's all I can ask for. And that's amazing that I can touch one person that I have. I don't even know who they are. Yeah. So that is phenomenal. And I really think that part of sharing your story and your journey. And if, as you said before, if you can impact one person or let mm -hmm. people know that they're not alone, I feel like that's amazing. There is a lot of humor, a part of your stories yeah. and your sharing, but I think that's a relief for a lot of people as well. Yes, I think so. And that's what I think people, and, and part of that is hard because I, there are so many serious sides of life. Um, and I do take them seriously, but at the same time, if we just live in that all the time, it gets really sad and depressing. And so we've got to have that humorous outlet as well. At least I do. So, yeah. So why did you step away from the typical influencer posts mm. on social media where every photo has got to be perfect and you've got to have 50,000 different filters? <laughs> why did you take this different avenue? I, it's not me. I am a very casual person. I'm not a big makeup, hair, dressy clothes type person. And so that was never me. And it wasn't going to be, I don't take the time to get myself all glamorous. So I really, um, I just, I, I'm like, if I'm going to do this, it has to be me. And even years ago when I was posting stuff, I don't care what I look like. I don't care if I look like a fool. Like that's part of being funny is not really caring what I, I guess like I can you know people have commented on my double chins like if you do this they won't show so much I'm like I don't care like they're there it's part of my body so um so I just yeah I just I I'm not the fancy and I appreciate the fancy schmancy videos and pictures that people post I really appreciate it and there's parts of me that I'm like ooh, oh I wish I could and then I'm like no yeah don't even try because it would never happen and I think part of it, it wouldn't be funny if I was doing it in that way um I I just I just like to be real and I want to connect with people the real me I don't want them to see you know something that's not me and some people that that is who they are and so I think it's relevant but for me that's not who I am so I'm not gonna you know, doll up every single time. If I happen to have makeup on already for the day, great. If not, it doesn't matter. I'm still going to do my video. So yeah. I love that. I always find it as well, like so exhausting. I don't know how people do it where they got so much time to take 50 photos or put on so much makeup. I'm like, I woke up like this, didn't even brush my hair this morning. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's me most of the time. And so I feel you. <laughs> It's beautiful. It's, I love looking at their stuff. I just can't do that. So <laughs> credit to not, them. Definitely. Yes. Um, of, they've got sure. the time. Good on them. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, and then I want to talk a little bit about motherhood. So I'm not a mother, but I've heard from my mom and plenty of mums of how exhausting it is, how draining <laughs> it can be, how it has its highs and lows all the time. How, how can you describe motherhood in your experience and is it difficult? Well, the short answer is yes. Um, it is, but it's very rewarding too. And our, uh, my journey to motherhood was, um, we, my husband and I went through about three years of infertility treatments and um, it was just a long process. And that, that part was extremely hard and extremely emotional for anyone that's been through infertility stuff. It's, it's lots of fun. Um, I ended up having to quit my job during that time because I was just like going out of my mind basically. Mm -hmm. So I, um, after that, we decided to go ahead and adopt to grow our family. And so we chose that route um, after basically spending all of our money on infertility mm -hmm. stuff. So, um, and then we adopted our son when he was a month old um, through an agency adoption. And then our girls, we got um, together, they were their siblings. And they, um, our son was seven when we got the girls and the girls were when one and a half and no, two and a half and 14 months old when we got them. So, um, so that's how we grew our family. So just the part of actually forming our family was a challenge in itself. Um, and when I look back on challenges that I deal with in life now, 
I think, okay, I was, I was being tested a long time ago to see how strong I was and I survived through that. So surely I can survive through today. Um, but yeah. And then once to actually becoming a parent, it's definitely a challenge, you know, and it's, um, every day is different. Every child is different. And, and yet it is so rewarding. Like, you know, by the time they go to bed at night, it's like, okay, okay. I still love everyone in this household. They may drive me crazy, but I love them. And they're great kids. We all, they're, all of our kids are really great, but yeah, it's, it's a challenge and it's, um, it's definitely not, it's definitely not easy and it's constantly changing, constantly changing. So you just, yeah. when you think like, okay, I got this, then they're like, just kidding. You don't have this. <laughs> Do you think that there's an added pressure and expectation on moms? Absolutely. Absolutely. I think so much. I am very blessed to have a husband that helps out so much. And we truly do have a, you know, relationship where it's hundred percent and hundred percent. And he's a, such a good dad. And I feel very blessed in that because I do see other relationships um, with parents and, you know, uh, friends, parents of kids. And I just, I'm like, oh my gosh, how do they do it? They're doing this all alone. So I'm very blessed that I do have a husband. As much as I make fun of him on um, on social media, he's amazing. Like pretty much everything I do out there that's making fun of him is not true, um, <laughs> because he's he does so great. He's such a good dad. So, but I think overall, yes, the expectation is on moms and starting out. You know, it's just it's expected that you stay home with the baby or you're gonna you know quit your job or do you know this or that. And I was very lucky to be home with my son until he was in preschool. And, um, and then I did the same thing when we got the girls because they really needed a, a parent at home when we got them. So I stayed home with them until they went to school. And then that's when I started, um, I became a realtor and started doing that. But I do think there's that pressure. And even just at home, it's all the household duties. And again, I feel like I'm very blessed and have a lot of help with that. But I know a lot of people that don't, and it's a lot of work. It's a lot of work to work and keep up with the kids and keep up with the home. And even for those that aren't working outside of the home, um, because I've been there too, it's so hard just to raise kids, <laughs> like just to be home with them all day long. It's exhausting. Yeah. And there's all these different phases. You know, you have the baby phase where you don't sleep at all. And then, you know, right now my girls fight like crazy. My son's 13, so we're having hormonal changes. And I'm like, ah, it's always, there's always something. There's always something. Yeah, but, wow. And yeah. How, how do you keep it together then with everything that's going on? Um, you know what? I'm a, I'm a very OCD. I like my planner. I have to write everything down. I swear I forget everything. So everything has to go in my phone and in my paper planner um to keep it very organized and one of the things that i um i actually wrote a little bit for an article not too long ago what which was a similar question was kind of like parenting in general what is your tips and tricks and my biggest thing that i've learned and especially over this last year is accepting help from other people mm -hmm. and i've always i have that personality i can do everything myself i don't need help i'm a strong in, you know, independent individual, I don't, I don't need anyone. And I had like almost a nervous breakdown this last year, de just dealing with all the things. And I realized I can't do this by myself. Like I have to get help. And it started like with having the kids home for school. I'm not cut out to do schoolwork with them. And I was having to do schoolwork with three different grades with my kids. And and I had to hire help to help me with the schoolwork part of things. Cause I'm trying to work from my home and doing them, it, it was it was so much, it was so much stress. So that's my thing and how I've been surviving is accepting help from other people. I have some great people in our neighborhood that will like drop the girls off one day, she drops hers off another day and just like reaching out and asking for help, um, whether it's friends or your doctor or whoever, I've found that have been, that's been so valuable for me to learn that lesson at like 40 years old. Um, it's I wish I would have learned it earlier because I'm like, okay, it's like a whole new world actually, like it, helping each other out too, you know? Yeah. So it's been very good. And how do moms find time for themselves then? Well, I, I think many don't. I really do think that that is a problem where, where people, moms especially, don't take time for themselves. And 
I think that's why we have so many um, issues with depression and our mental health situation going on in this, well, all countries, I guess. Yeah. But um, like, I, I don't think people are finding the time. And that's one of the things that I have learned this last year is, and I've had to work out with my husband, is taking time that's not work, that's not kids, that's just for me. And if it's sitting and watching a show or going and getting a pedicure, um, it's being intentional with finding some alone time because it's exhausting. Like, I, and I get tired of like, just noise, just noise. Like there's always noise. So, um, but I think it's really hard for a majority of moms to do that because, you know, if you're working outside of the home, you get home, there's a ton of stuff to do, you know, and it never, it never ends. So I think it's, it, you have to be really, really intentional about it. And again, that would be one of those things where if you don't have a partner that is helpful or you're a single parent where you might have to learn to reach out to family members or friends and just say, Hey, you know, every Thursday afternoon, can you keep the kid you, and, and make it work for yourself? Because I'm sure there's someone out there for everyone I'm discovering um, mm -hmm. that is willing and ready and wants to help. So is there a lot of guilt attached to that as well? Having free time or putting aside time for yourself when there is such a big to-do list to do? Yes. And again, this is something I've done a lot of personal growth this year, but that's another thing that I have worked really hard on and I'm definitely not there yet is letting go of some of that guilt because absolutely I feel like, oh, even with my husband, I'll think, oh, well, you know, he can't cook as well as I can, although he cooks better, but like he can't, you know, he won't clean up like I do or he'll, he won't make sure they brush their teeth or whatever it might be. It's like, who cares? Like, go get your break, go out with your girlfriends, go do your thing. Um, and who cares if it's not done as perfectly as you can. But I have, I have definitely lived in that guilt stage forever where it's just like, oh, they need me though. Like if I'm not there, it, it, they can't manage and they, they sure can. And I think they enjoy a break from mom too. So um, yeah, but the guilt is, it's, that's a huge thing. It's always, I feel like I worked on it, but it's there. It's definitely yeah. always there. And if I talk a little bit about going back to your journey and the start of your adoption process, mm -hmm. were you ever scared? Because I guess you didn't have that preparation period or going through that pregnancy. Mm -hmm. Were you terrified because you essentially had no idea what you were getting or what you were getting yourself into in that way? Yeah, it was terrifying. Um, and it was, this was well, my son's 13. So it was probably, you know, 14, 15 years ago when we started the process. Um, and at the time, my husband and I were actually both raised in a religious cult. And so at the time we were still in the cult um, when we adopted our, our son, our first child. So that was really challenging in itself mm -hmm. because we didn't have resources and support because we were um, kind of required to stay within our, our little unit there. Um, so, and we, we, Dwayne had an aunt and uncle, my husband that had adopted. Other than that, we had never, ever, ever, we didn't know people that adopted it. Just even I look at 15 years ago, how different it is. And probably I'm very immersed in that, um, community now. So I know that makes it different, but it was very different for us back then. Like we knew no one. So it was terrifying. It was like, okay, here we go. Um, and then to the first time, especially we we're just so, um, just, we didn't know what we were getting into. Like you don't, I think until you just experience it, you just can't fully know. Um, but at the same time, like after dealing with all the infertility issues, I was kind of like, it can't be that bad. Like it can't be worse than what we just went through. Um, and it kind of was, but it was, it's hard. It's really, really hard, but it's amazing. And, um, there, there were so many, obviously children, we have our wonderful family now and we wouldn't have without that, but yeah, so many scary moments throughout. Um, I mean, I could go on forever just with those mm -hmm. stories, but yeah, it, it definitely was terrifying. And again, we, it was really scary just not having that support the second time around with the girls, we did some foster care in between um, my son and the girls of kids that didn't end up staying with us, but um, it was, it was exhausting. It was exhausting. Just the, the mentally, just the process is just, it wears you out, but it's totally worth it. Oh, but I know what I was going to say. 
I was definitely more ready and experienced by the time we got the girls because mm -hmm. we had been through it. We have we'd had some foster kiddos in our home. So you kind of get to know the system and how everything works a little bit. So I felt like when we got the girls, it, we were much more prepared for how everything worked, where when we got our son, it was just we were clueless, just clueless. <laughs> Probably like most parents, when they get their, their first child, they yep. download or buy every book that there is to get it perfect. Mm -hmm. It ends up being the complete opposite. Right. Yeah. Yeah. It, no, that's exactly how it is. And it's, and it's with our son, it was kind of a um, surprise. We weren't, it was just, it was kind of an out of blue thing. So it was literally like one day we didn't have a baby and then the next day we did and mm -hmm. it was like someone just shows up at your house drops the baby off and like it was it was weird it was the it was such a weird experience because you're just like oh my gosh i have a baby now <laughs> and, and it was you feel like you're preparing for it like you said you're reading the books and all the th and then it was like oh we have a baby here we go we're parents and i think yeah, that's the thing very as well that you can read all the books that you want. You can download all the eBooks that you can find or listen to the best mums out there, but every child is different and every situation yeah. needs a different response. Yeah, for sure. 100%. On your, on your fertility journey as well. Did you ever have the fear that you weren't going to be a mom? Um, in the back of my head, I always thought like, I, we will just adopt. Like we all, I always knew we could do that. But again, back then it was very different as far as even like you'd get on the internet to research a little bit. Now you can find anything, but even 15 years ago, you just didn't have the resources. Um, so it was definitely, there were moments I, my biggest problem was I wanted to be pregnant like forever. Like I just love pregnant people. I think they're amazing and cute and I wanted to be pregnant so bad. So that was, um, and you know, I had to go through therapy and stuff for it, but it's a grieving process to give up that you're never going to be pregnant. And I never ever really felt like, oh, I'm going to love my adopted children different than if I was to give birth to a child. I never felt that way. And especially once we got the kids, it was like, you just love them no matter what. It doesn't even matter, you know, if they're born to you or not. Um, but I definitely yeah there were moments where i was just like i just want to give up this is too hard and after fertility stuff it was kind of that way where my husband was like okay let's adopt and i was just kind of like i gotta grieve first and it the, yeah it was it was a lot i actually have right here that i keep is my very last embryos um and i keep them on my desk on my board here to remind me um you know kind of the whole unanswered prayer thing it's, I wouldn't have the family I had to have now if these guys would have, you know, survived. So I just kind of keep that. Those were my last, my last eggs, but, um, or embryos, but it, yeah. So there were definitely really scary moments where it was just like, and even with adoption, like you had said earlier, you don't know what your, you don't know what your child's going to look like. You don't, where at least when you are pregnant, you have a little bit of an idea of what, you know, things you have in the family. And with us, it was just like, we have no clue. But that part of it was also really exciting too, to be like, we have no, we don't know, like it could be anything. So it was, it was really exciting too. Yeah. Were you ever scared that people were going to judge because your children essentially were adopted? Um, I never really I never, I don't know actually, but I don't, I don't ever really remember feeling just worried about that part of it so much, but, um, but we definitely got comments, which I think looking back, like I would have, like there were moments I would be sensitive about certain questions or comments people would, would hand me. But then like looking back, I think people that are pregnant or have babies or whatever are getting the same type of questions. People that are just not thinking when they ask questions in general. So I think no matter how your child comes to your family, you're going to get some crazy questions. And I actually had someone, I won't say who, but very close that even said that our babies weren't going to be smart because they were formula fed and that only breastfed babies, you know, were smart. And so stuff like that, that was like, okay, well, sorry, like I don't really have a choice. So mm -hmm. if you want this family member to be alive, they have to have formula. Um, so stuff like that. But I never really, I, ne I don't feel like I ever really let it get to me because I was just so happy to be a mom. I was just like, I, it was,
was amazing. It was such an amazing experience. Yeah. And do your kids ever look at you when you're making another video and be like, oh, geez, love, you're doing it again. <laughs> they they don't mind they don't mind it all of them are pretty good sports the funniest is with my son he's 13 he doesn't have a tiktok or any social media but his friends all do so his friends are always like oh your mom's video was so funny today or and he'll be like mom what did you post you better show me they said it was funny so he kind of gets into it and and he i think he secretly thinks it's pretty cool and i just got um my shanty pants shirts and he like wanted a bunch of them. He's like, I, that's, I just love these t-shirts. I just want to wear them. And I'm like, oh my God, okay, I'll take this. He's 13 and he wants to wear my shirts, yay. Aww. He still wants to be so attached to good. mom while he's ending yes. your teenage years. Hold on to it as long as you can. <laughs> yes, that's what I'm like. Yes, I'll buy you every color. <laughs> <laughs> that's so awesome. Uh, yeah, and yeah, and a lot of, you say like a lot of brands have jumped on as well to what you're doing. Why do you think they've jumped on board and wanted to support you and your, your real message? Um, you know, I think there's different reasons for it. Um, one of the things with influencers that I'm like just learning all of this, you know, because I'm very new to this, is um, a lot of these companies like these micro influencers, they call them, these people with these smaller accounts but that really connect with their communities. And I feel like I do pretty well with that. Like mm -hmm. as my accounts grow, it's getting harder and harder, but I try to respond to as many comments as I can. If I get any private you know, messages, direct messages, I really try to respond to all of those. And I have people reaching out with questions about infertility, about adoption. And I love being part of this like cool community that's created around my account. And, um, so I think people see, like these influencer or these ad companies that want me to do ads, they see that and um, and they that's what they're looking for is these kind of smaller accounts and whether they connect with the mom part of it or like I do a lot with White Claw. So there's some companies that reach out to me because of my White Claw connection. Um, so yeah, I think there's lots of different reasons, but I think part of it is just having that small account and then just being real, like you said, just you know, if you want me to wear makeup, cool, but I don't normally. So are you okay with that? And they're usually like, yeah, that's great. So, um, so I think they just like the realness and I try to keep it real. And I'm also really picky with what companies I will do things for. I turn down at least one a day because I just, I'm not going to do ads for products that I don't like. And even I have them send me products before I um, commit to doing an ad. So I've tried stuff and I'm like, I'm sorry, I don't, I don't like it. Like, I'm not, I'm not going to promote something. Even if you're paying me to do it, I'm not going to do it for something that I don't believe in or that I don't think has any value. Mm -hmm. So it helps weed out some of those, but, um, but yeah, it's fun though. I love doing it. Yeah. Do you ever get any trolls or people that degrade what you're doing or the products that you're selling? Yeah, not so much the products. There's definitely that when I put the ads out, they don't like it. They say, um, I, oh, why are you doing ads? Just do your funny stuff. And it's like, okay, well, sorry, I'm going to make a couple bucks um, and throw an ad out there every once in a while. You know, you can just skip by it. Um, but it's, other than that, the ads aren't problems. Usually I don't get much negative stuff on those. Some of them do. And the beginning delete every comment I could find and then I just my over and me backing me up and defending me and so it's tricky because it's like it's cool like oh my people are defending me but at the same time I don't like fights going on on my page you know like these back and forth drama I'm just it's not me so I try to try to delete them if I see them, but now I typically just leave them and let it ride. And, and now I'm using a lot of these negative comments for a lot of my material. So really they're helping me out at this point. And mm -hmm. I have the personality, I can just let it go. Um, I, it really bothers even some of my friends. They're like, oh my, like they'll freak. And I'm like, whatever, like they were having, who knows what their day was like, it was probably terrible. And so I just, I don't, I don't let it bother me. That's so good. That doesn't affect your mental health. Cause I know a lot of people can obsess over those comments and just go round and round with them. Yes. Yes. And yeah. at the beginning, I think I, it bothered me a little bit more just because I'm like, Oh, that's 
rude and I was more surprised by it. And now I'm just like, it's out there. People are, there's sad people out there everywhere. So. Yeah. Um, and then I want to talk a little bit about some of the posts that you do post are very, they expose your body and you, you're, you're free minded. You have no mm-hmm. filter. How do you do it? How do you just expose everything and just put it out there into the world and just be happy with it? Um, that's been another growing thing as well. And I, um, I guess I kind of like my hair make very, I just don't care that much. Um, I don't, you know, I think as women too, we, we judge ourselves so harshly as far as our body and our and makeup, hair, what anything. Um, and so I think that's just another reason we can be really hard on ourselves. And I think I'm very normal to the, like where, oh yeah, I wish my stomach was a little small, you know, flatter. And of course my legs were a little thinner, but my goal in the last couple of years, I've got two little girls, eight and nine. And I'm like, I don't want them to see me jumping on the scale first thing every morning, worried about what I'm weighing today. And, um, and again, because they're adopted, I don't know really what their weight body type is going to be as they get older. And so I never want to put anything into their head and same with my son too, but they're, um, you know, preconceived, like, this is what I should be. And this is the only way to be or worried about it. I just, so I've really been focusing more on, um, health and like, if I'm feeling strong, you know, I've been trying to do my little workouts 30 minutes a day and, um, and, you know, eat pretty good, but not like perfect. And, that's what I'm trying to focus on and not worry so much about the flabby arms and, and all the other things. If I'm feeling healthy, then I'm saying that that's okay. And yeah, but it's not always easy, but you know, I'm 40 now and that's what, and I've been talking with this a lot about friends like, or with my friends lately. And we're like, we're all wearing bikinis this year. Like we don't care. And you know, at this point, if my body never gets any better, Oh, well, like I am, if I'm feeling strong and healthy, I'm happy with it. So I'm really trying to um, pursue that and, and create that environment for my kids um, because, you know, they're going to have issues with body image anyway, because it's just life. So hopefully I can help alleviate some of that stress. And it's beautiful. I mean, I know a lot of people do negatively see those posts or can comment on them and say why are you doing that or but I think it's actually a beautiful art because the confidence that someone can have in posting their real authentic self without a filter without photoshop to me that's magical and that's what humanity should be we should be accepting each other for what we are instead of what we want to be and what we try to alter ourselves to be so credit to you I'm still not confident Mm -hmm. enough post it all and reveal it all but um it's amazing that you can be so carefree and share it out there and as you said for your own kids it's a message that we really need to push more often yep yep and I think that's the important part of it it's and that that's what's really pushed me it's like who cares what you feel like Shannon if you're feeling fat or whatever who cares like your kids are looking at you and so if you're sitting out there all covered up, they're going to assume like, oh, that's what you do is you cover up. I'm like, here I am. <laughs> <laughs> For the world to see, everyone to see. Yes. Oh to my God. Yeah, share it all. <laughs> How does your husband feel about it? He's pretty supportive. At the beginning, like years ago when I would do it, he would just be like, oh my gosh. And then once COVID hit, we were very bored. And so I'd be like, okay, here, look, you can you can video me because you're home too. And so he started being my photographer until I got myself a, you know, fancy little tripod. And um, he, he was, he's been in a couple of my videos, but he, he's a good sport. He likes, and he'll like send me ideas. So he's my source for ideas. Well, a lot of people are, but um, I don't have time to sit and like look for ideas. So he'll, Mm -hmm. he'll send me videos and be like, do this one, do this one. So he's a big supporter. He wears my shirts. Like he, he's hilarious. And he, um, but he's, we're like completely different personalities. He is super quiet. He would be like, if we go to like a parenting class, I'm like front row questions. Here we go. And he's like, let's sit in the back. So we're like completely opposite, but you know, it works. So he's very supportive of it. I was going to say, yeah, how do fine. you find material? Cause you're constantly posting stuff. And I'm always, every time I see something, I'm like, that's so true. But I'm like, how did you find that? 
I, well, a lot of it is like rehashing TikTok videos because there's so much material out there of hilarious people. So a lot of times I will use, you know, the voiceover of someone else or use their their vocal and you know lip sync to it but some of it is friends just sending me like pictures or videos they've seen they're like i think you can make this funnier if you add this and so and then sounds like i'll even be in my car listening to music and i'll have to like talk to my phone to have her um keep track of some songs for me because there'll be something in the song i'll be like oh i can make this funny i can make this funny so there's a lot of different ways that the stuff comes to me and then as far as getting it done it, it i try to post every day but it is hard but a lot of times i'm a night owl so i'll stay up late so when the kids go to bed i'll you know go down the kitchen and whip out like five videos real quick and so then i'm like okay that at least gives me five days of videos um and i keep thinking gosh if this was my only job I would definitely be a lot more organized about it and like schedule stuff. And I just haven't gotten there yet. I need to though. <laughs> That's all right. I feel like you're already doing an amazing job. And as you said, you're reaching uh, so many people. You. So I feel like you're That's smashing it, <laughs> smashing the whole mom thing yeah. as well. So yeah. mm. Don't now, I, wanna, <laughs> I wanna talk a little bit about obviously your history in terms of you went on the Kelly Clarkson show. How was that yeah. experience and how did you get to be on there? That was such an amazing experience. Um, yeah. Her, one of her um, assistant directors reached out to me on Instagram and um, just said, hey, we're doing this mom show. They do their mom show every so often. And she's like, hey, could you get on the next one? And I'm like, oh my gosh, yes. <laughs> like, it doesn't matter what day. Yes, I'll be there. Um, and it just so happened that we were doing upstairs during this time and they had you like arrange your computer where you had like they had to okay the background behind you and the house was literally torn apart and so i'm like in this corner with like this little rickety table pulled up to me it was a hot mess but i'm like i will be there my friend did my makeup for me and um and then it was just such a fun experience like obviously it was virtual so, but you're seeing everything happening on your screen, like you're behind the scenes. It was so cool. It was just like such a neat experience and she is hilarious. Yeah. And I've always, I've always liked her. And now I'm just like obsessed and she's so funny. And then, um, and then I'm trying to, I talked to the director too. And so now like we're friends on Instagram with like this assistant director that I talked to a lot and then the director. And, um, oh my gosh, like they're hilarious. And yeah, so they just, and I asked them that I said, how did you find me? Like, what makes you call me? There's a million other people that are funnier than me. And she said, well, we just searched like, um, it, TikTok was the thing that they were like TikTok moms. And so she said, we just searched like TikTok moms and your videos kept popping up. And I'm like, all right, cool. Like, I don't know how that I've made it. Like, yes, that's, I felt, I'm like, I have made it. I definitely have. That's, yeah. that was amazing. Especially yeah. Kelly Clarkson. Like for me, yeah. she's a phenomenal woman. Um, and to be in just the same virtual space as her and communicating, did you get like the celebrity jitter like feels that you can get? It was, it was pretty exciting and I can I'm like I don't get real nervous about stuff like that but I was a little bit and even with it being virtual I was just like oh and then my computer we were having issues of course so I was so stressed I was like sweating I'm like we're on the phone and something wasn't connecting with the however they set it up and I was oh my gosh I was so stressed out and and then she said go get a white claw because they always drink their wine in the show and I don't drink wine, I drink White Claws. So yeah. she's like, go get your White Claws. So you can just go sip on it while we're figuring this out. And I'm like, okay. <laughs> um, so it was, so that part of, and then once I got past that, like she was talking me through it, you like, you're on there for like hours. So it was, it, we had plenty of time, but I was thinking they're gonna start without me. Like, no, it's fine. It's gonna be um, late to the party, the one party you want to attend. Yes. Seriously, I'm like, if this doesn't happen, I'm going to be like, I'm going to like this computer is going in the trash, but <laughs> it worked out and it was so fun. And she's so funny. It was a blast. Oh, it would been awesome. And even I remember watching a bit and in that space, talking about motherhood and the comedic mm. side of it, it would have been just so good for the audience to hear that and your perspective as well as Kelly's um, perspective as well, being a mom. Um, yeah. I feel like it was a really raw and good interview sort of space. And it was quite yeah. funny to watch. 
it was, yeah, it was a lot of fun. And then Jen and Kristen, who she had on for her, like, you know, they were actually there in person. I love them. I went to one of their shows live probably four years ago. And so when they told me they were the ones that were going to be there, I'm like, oh my gosh, I love Jen and Kristen. They're so funny. So it was, it was fun to like, you know, virtually meet them too. Yeah. Why do you think mums are, are taking a more comedic side to motherhood? Because back in, let's just say the day, mm-hmm. it was such a taboo. It was no one talked about motherhood the way that they do now or expose the realness of it. So why do you think now people are starting to talk about it? I think we need it. Um, I think people are like myself. It's like, I don't care anymore. Like, I don't care if people are going to judge me. And I spent a lot, a lot of years and partially because of how we were raised, but a lot of years um, feeling very judged all the time and judging others. And, um, and I didn't like me as that person. And so it's really, you know, it's, I'm 40 now, so it's not like it happened overnight. I've always had like that funny side to me, but I finally got to this place, you know, late later in my life where it's like, I don't care. And I want to be that help for someone else. Um, whether it's, you know, to talk about adoption or the stress of being a mom and, like every day there's something that comes up that I'm like, oh, I need to ask someone about this. So I decide, you know, I want to be that for other people and and be real about it because I think we do. And, and like you said, it's like this wave of this now, which is so refreshing to see because all we've seen for so long is, you know, the Pinterest moms and how fancy schmancy. And I used to try to compete with that. And, and then I'm just like, it's not me. I'm not someone that wants to put parties together. Like, we'll go rent the bounce house and that's good. And kids will smash pizza on it. Like they would if I made it myself, you know? So I, I just, I just realized it wasn't me and I'd rather spend my time doing other stuff than worrying about the stuff that I always worried about. So I do think it's a need. It's a need for, to see the normal side of motherhood as awful as it can be sometimes. (laughs) Did you ever think or sort of feel the emotions of when you compared yourself to other mums and the Pinterest mums, did that take a while to realize that you weren't that type of mum? And how did that make you feel? I think it did take a while. And I think I, I deep inside thought I was that kind of mom. Um, And like how I was raised, my mom was, she loved doing parties and stuff. So I was raised around her. She planned everything. Um, and she did amazing parties. So that was part of it. It's just that my mom was so awesome at that stuff. And I, I'm very capable of doing it. And so I think it was just natural, like, oh, this is what we do. We go all out on the parties and, you know, all this stuff. And, but it, yeah, so it was definitely a slow progression to figure out, like, this is just stressful. Like it's, it's taking so much out of me mentally that by the time the party actually gets here, I'm not having a good time. Um, and I mean, there were some that I, I would say we're fine, but now I'm very low key. It's like, we go to Dollar Tree, we pick out some stuff and we're good to go. But yeah, I think it took, I did do think it took a while to, for me. And even now I'll see some of my really good friends and I'll be like, oh my gosh, that's a gorgeous party. Um, But I'll just use it now. I'll do like a side-by-side picture. I did that a couple years ago. And there was this gorgeous tea party at my friend's little girls. um, It would have been when Zoe turned eight, I guess. And I put it side by side by our garage because I opened up our garage and put like a bunch of markers and coloring books and stuff out there. And it looked like a bomb went off in our garage. So I like posted those pictures side by side and I'm like, their birthday parties, my birthday parties. Um, And so I've just gotten like, that's okay. Like my kid had a great time. She had a great birthday party. Um, And and the fancy one's amazing too. It's just, it's not me anymore. So yeah, but it took a while. I think it took a long time. And then there's still moments where it's like, oh, should I do that? Nah, no. <laughs> and I think it's, it's great because you've got to create that acceptable environment, environment for not just yourself, but other mums out there. And because yes. you're sharing that, it's great that you're able to show people that this is okay. You don't yeah. have to have it all. Right. Um, now, what's next for you? Is there anything coming up, any new videos or what's next on your, your journey to influencing others about the realness? I'm trying to keep with what I'm doing now. I'm currently writing a book about my story, um, which I've always wanted to do, but never had the courage to do. And I had um, someone reach out to me that's a literary agent. And she said, are you going to write a book? And I said, well, I'm not sure my story is like, 
good enough for a book? And she's like, yeah, it is. So um, it gave me like the push to be like, all right, let's start. So I was hoping to have it published by this year, but it won't be done this year. But that's like my big thing. It's just, it's, it's a lot. It's a lot of digging into the past, it's a lot of therapy, and it's a lot of time with having three kids at home um, and two jobs, basically. <laughs> but as far as the, the influencer side of things, I, at some point, would like this to be my only job. As much as I love being a realtor, I do want to move towards, this is where I picture myself. Um, mm -hmm. And not even, I don't know, there's so many connections I've made. I don't even know which direction it will end up going but definitely it's going to be from this whole shanty pants side of things is I want to, my life is going that direction for sure. So I don't know exactly where it's going. The book is very important to me. Um, and then other than that, I'm just having fun, you know, and, and again, I'm making a little money here and there by these companies that I am, you know, wanting to do ads for and um, just to kind of make all my time that I put into that account worth it. I also just want to ask two questions before we let you go and enjoy the rest of your day. Um, have you planned or know what you're going to do, not so much after motherhood, but after that period where your kids are no longer that dependent on you? Because this is a question that I often think about and I discuss with my mum because obviously us kids are getting older and how she's going to separate when you know, we become less reliant on her. Have you thought about that? Yes, <laughs> uh, I sure have. No, I, um, I want to be here to support my children, whatever they decide to do in life. Um, so I always want to be available for them, but I definitely want my husband, for my husband and I to travel. We've mm -hmm. always, we have not traveled much in our life. Um, and I would love to get, that's what I want to do. I want to spend time traveling. There's so many different places we want to go. Um, so that's what I want to do is travel, but always be available for my kids. And even this is obviously way future, hopefully. Um, but grandkids too, like I want to set myself up to where we can have time to travel and then try to be home and available or around when there's grandkids in the picture. So do you think it'll be, happens. yeah. Do you think it'll be hard to detach from that? Um, I guess active present mom that you have been and continue to be for this period of time? Uh, yeah, I think parts, yeah, I think the, the whole empty nest thing, I think that will be very hard, um, especially when it happens. Like I can be kind of tough about it and be like, ah, I'll be fine. But I think when it happens, it will be hard. Um, I just, I love being alone. I'm one of those people like, I'll go away for a weekend by myself and everyone's like, where are you taking a friend? And I'm like, no, no, just me. Um, so I, so I am looking forward to aspects of that. Everyone says I'll miss it and I know I will, but, um, but yeah, so I'm, I'm sure it will be very hard. And I just, I just hope to have my kids, you know, set up to where they're very ready when that time comes. And so hopefully that makes me feel better about them moving on in their life. Yeah, awesome. And last question, is there any tips or little tricks? I know you did mention earlier in the interview, but anything you can offer, just some support um, for mums out there that may be struggling or maybe watching your videos and being like, I want to be like that, but I just, I just can't. Yes, I would say, and these may sound very simple, but be yourself. Um, my, that's what I'm doing. I am being myself. That's how I've grown this community. It's not from special tricks on the internet that I know. Like I am not good at any of that stuff. Um, so I, I am truly like, and again, this is a new thing for me to truly be myself. So I feel like I'm growing like along with my community and getting more comfortable and more confident in what I'm doing um, with all my people and I love it. So I, I, and I think in parenthood or anything, it's be yourself. Like you've got to, um, and I think constantly be growing like that's my thing is like I've had periods in my life where I feel like I have just been stagnant and it's not a happy place to be so I feel like if you're constantly moving forward and constantly growing like we're really big on like doing parenting classes or marriage classes and I, I feel like there's always some way to improve myself and um and that's been a journey to get to that place of wanting to improve myself but I would say, yeah, be yourself and then also reach out for help. Like I said earlier, that's the hugest, that's my biggest 
biggest thing that I have learned in this last year or so, and even just through parenthood, because I look at how many years I went without help just because I'm like, I'm fine, I'm fine, I'm fine. And I'm like, gosh, so many things would have been so much easier if I would have accepted help because I've always had people that would have helped me if they knew I needed help. Mm -hmm. um, and again, whether that be like this year, I had to reach out to a doctor because of some mental health stuff with me. And I think it's, you have to have some courage. It was really hard for me to do that because I'm fine. I'm fine. I'm fine. I'm fine. I'm, I'm, I'm tough. I can handle it. So it was really hard for me to humble myself enough to realize like, I need something extra. I'm doing counseling. I'm doing a lot of stuff for me, but there's something that's still not right with me. So I think whether it's reaching out to your doctor or friends or whatever is to make sure um, you stay in community and reach out to friends, because I think pretty much everyone has someone that is willing to be there for them. And that's been huge. That's how I've survived the last two years. It's like, oh, my friends, I'm like, now you guys are probably tired of me, but <laughs> it's been it's give and take, you know, we got to have those good relationships. Yeah. And good on you for being so open and honest about your own mental health journey, because yeah. we all know how tough it can be, but the more that we can talk about it and yeah. make it normalize, the more we can all get through it. Yeah. And that's what I think that's my that this whole community. And again, I'm getting more courageous and brave talking about more of this stuff on my page. And, you know, I go back and forth. I'm like, I don't want to scare everyone off and be like, well, all she talks about is mental health. But there's so many different subjects that I'm very passionate about. And so it's kind of for now, it's growing my community and putting parts of this out there, whether it's adoption and fertility, mental health. Um, getting up to a place where this, you know, I'm really going to advocate for some of this, these, you know, um, subjects that I'm really passionate about. So, yeah, but it is, it's hard to kind of step out and make that step of being brave. <laughs> yeah, well, good on you. And thank you for posting and sharing everything that you do, because I mean, if you're not helping one person, I, f I, f I think it's ridiculous because yeah. all the stuff that you're sharing is phenomenal. Oh, and I thank, thank you. you. Where can we all find you online? You can find me at official shanty pants on Instagram and TikTok, and then shanty pants on Twitter and Facebook. And then, um, official shantypants.com beautiful and you should oh, definitely go sure. check um shannon out on them because they are phenomenal and they're the highlight of most of my days just to know that i'm not alone even though i'm not a parent but just i know videos. i love that oh i just loved i watched the video the other day and it was about the toilet paper rolls oh yes um, i was just like oh my god i showed it to my brother i'm like see this is what you actually have to do mate like you know this is how it happens <laughs> Oh my God. I had one of those hell yes moments. <laughs> yes. You're like, just send someone that video and be like, hint, hint, here you go. Yeah. Yeah. And I, and I love it that you're exposing that and sharing that because it's phenomenal thank you. and it's all that you're fun. doing is incredible. So, and thank you for sharing your journey and your story today. Um, I feel like that's one way that we can break down taboos and stigmas and know that there's a human behind the face. Yeah. Um, absolutely so it's beautiful and again thank you for coming on today and thank you everyone out there for joining us for another secret sunday session um we'll catch you again in two weeks but thank you shannon and we'll see thank you, you guys so later. much yes bye. so good to meet you bye